Okay, hello everyone, this is Mr. Rob Ronan here again, and I've made an intro for this video before when I was talking about the demon character, the slayer characters, just talking about how this patch kind of came out and I didn't notice for an entire month because, I don't know, I guess the YouTube or other algorithms decided that I don't care about this game anymore. But yeah, cool. A secret patch about this game that actually includes balance changes is super exciting. And I just went over all the changes for the Slayer characters and now I'll do so the same for the Demons. Mainly because, um, you know, they're a different group, but also they all tended to get a decent amount of more changes than the Slayer characters got. Most of the Slayer characters were like, a slight bit more damage to your throw or a slightly safer DP or stuff like that. But Demons seem like they actually got some more noticeable balance changes because I guess they are some of the more volatile members of the cast so yeah if you want to listen to my full spiel of an intro about how this is kind of cool and also a kind of bit disappointing go to that video where I talked about the slayers but in this one we're just going to go straight into the balance changes for the demons first of course we're going to start with Akaza so for him his uh like his projectiles his aerial attack um, sorry, I'm just, I, <laughs> I've already read them, so I was excited to talk about this one. His skill 1 air-type air projectiles now have a shortened combo timer, so now instead of getting a yellow combo, they now start a red combo. And his, like, his dive kick from the air, his tilt attack in the air, now has a better hitbox, which is cool. And, as if it didn't already do enough damage, his demon skill 1 collapse just does more damage. Cool. Now, um... What was the thing? Change the hitbox of the plunge isn't too noticeable. There are some situations where in combos you're like, okay, that should have hit, but it doesn't. Now you, the hitbox is kind of the rocks, including it used to just be like where as where he landed as his foot. But now even if he's not landing right on top of you, the hitbox of the rocks kind of, as you can see there, hits Sabito. And even if they hit the opponent, um, you know, you get to go in for your little red combo and speaking of red combos as you can see here even if i do land my projectiles and hit confirm them into a dash in or whatever i'm not going to get that much damage like the most damage i'm probably going to get is just a regular attack string because it's just a red combo now which is a little unfortunate but hey getting a full combo off of <laughs> your projectiles was already a pretty weird idea in the first place but now especially if you do like the full all of them there's like really not much reason to go into annihilation and confirm into that unless it's just for the kill and like you go into this you're not gonna be getting much more damage to that so it's kind of good it makes his projectile leg game less scary when you're fighting uh, against him which is really good because it was weird that he was kind of really scary as a zona because anytime he lands these projectiles he can either go in, like into this get some kind of combo now there's no point doing that because he's just kind of wasting meter and if he wants to hit confirm it he can go into this for a little bit more damage but he's not going to do like crazy full combos on you like he used to so that's cool and then of course this doing more damage yeah i don't know it already did a lot of damage and now in case you're a little bit sad by some of the slight nerfs to like the projectiles they tried to make up for it by just making his damage, you know, a teensy bit more ridiculous than it already was. Because he definitely needed it. <laughs> now, Rui, not too much. His demon skill one, the murderous eye basket, will now nullify the opponent's projectiles, excluding ultimates. Um, not too sure how I'm going to test this without a training partner. But basically, this thing, where it just spawns on top of the opponent, is now going to be slightly more useful in neutral. Still not going to be great because I imagine it's still super, super minus. Like the opponent can get a free dash in and punish you for most distances. But now if you do try to catch the opponent doing something, like if, I don't know, Enmu or Susamaru or someone's trying to throw out projectiles or something and you throw this, it will actually hit their projectiles as well and delete them. Because if you use it and then the projectiles are still flying at you <laughs> and then you get hit while you're trying to do it, that's not too great. Now... It's just slightly better at doing what it's meant to be good at. Which is handy. But nothing too big. Now, Yahaba actually got some nerfs to make his zoning a little bit less offensive. So his jump height is shorter now. His throw is actually better. It does more damage and has a bigger hit. So 
it'll just hit from further or higher up or more around. It's just bigger. The distance that he moves backwards when he uses an aerial attack, um, like the full string of aerial attacks is smaller now. Because yeah, when he did that, he like pushed himself so far away. It was basically like a get away from me tool while he also throws projectiles. And also the same here, when he throws his boulder toss, shorten the distance that he moves backwards when he does it. So basically, um, his ways of... The actual projectiles that he throws aren't any weaker, but his, the ways that he constantly gets away from you and runs away always is weaker. So see, when he does this, he barely moves away at all now, where he, it basically used to like push you and then like move you over here by the time it was over. And you're basically full screen if you land this. Which is also crazy, because you know, these are projectiles and you can throw other projectiles afterwards. So it's a way of attacking and moving away at the same time. And then the same thing for this. He used to kind of like take steps back as he threw them. He would be like, boom, boom, boom. And then just push away while he throws projectiles, which also push you away. But now he like doesn't really step back at all. He just takes these little micro steps. So still really good zoning. Don't get it twisted. He's, the projectiles are still great. He just doesn't move away while he does them. And throw, whoa. Okay, that hitbox looks a lot larger. It actually looks kind of giant. Can you see this hitbox? That is huge. It used to be pretty small, just so it like works like a regular throw. But now, I would. It's. I'm not gonna say it's Enmu range, but it's getting close to the ridiculousness of the massive hitbox of Enmu. Look at that. That is pretty far. I don't know. That's getting a little ridiculous for me and for my liking. And it's still pretty decent speed, and now it does pretty decent damage. Yikes. Also his jump. Oh, actually, yeah, I didn't even notice that. His jump is really low. Can he even jump over the opponent? Okay, he can. But like, yeah, which is actually really important because he used to just jump and throw projectiles and stuff. And even if you like dodged or went around them, he would just be so high in the air. Just like, you know, like every character is when they're in the air, but he stays in the air for so long while he does his stuff that you can't really hit him unless you like somehow just walk around and then kind of jump up into the air and hit him, which is kind of awkward in this game. Anti-airs don't really exist. So now, thankfully, he doesn't jump as high. So regular attacks and like special moves and stuff will actually be able to hit him if the opponent manages to dodge out of the way. So just a nerf to the annoying parts of his zoning where he just kind of manages to escape you no matter what. But a seriously buffed throw to make up for it. Susamaru is up next and this is probably one of the most controversial things about this patch which like really makes me feel like this patch is not made by people who pay attention to this game at all a lot of the changes are small just little random things just kind of kind of a band-aid patch just a patch for the sake of a patch but doesn't actually change much of the gameplay but susamaru they were just like i don't know someone on the team loves susamaru and loves playing susamaru and they just buffed her even more even though people already complain that she's a ridiculously strong character they buffed the things that are already strong about her and made them stronger and more ridiculous so where are the actual changes so her light attacks deal more damage we'll see how much that actually is but that's one of her main weaknesses is that her regular free attacks don't deal that much damage she has to spend meter to do damage but now she does more damage with her light attacks like what okay now it's more difficult to dodge the homing effect on the startup of skill 2 spinning throw. And the skill gauge begins recovering earlier. What? Let's keep reading. But the reduced damage, uh, reduce the damage of uncharged skill 3, but it's also now possible to cancel with a quick dodge when blocked. Okay, I'm going to have to test that this all means what I think it does. But her skill 2, or her tilt skill, where she jumps aside and throws the ball is one of my favorite and most abusable things about this character because she dodges out of the way of other projectiles and special moves and approaches while throwing her own projectile that can be cancelled into combo starting special moves and like is her main way of starting damage is just now harder to dodge and she gains more meter after using it like what they, they just made this move way better it's uh, and also skill three like reduce damage okay sure this it was really 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 damaging now it maybe it might be normal and it's possible to cancel with a quick dodge when blocked and i just need to check what that actually means right the hell now so okay sabato you're blocking what what guys 
If you don't know what this means, this means a lot. Especially in combination with this being better, oh my goodness. So now, okay, it doesn't apply to this one, yeah. So, uh, so, I don't even know how to start talking about this. And we haven't even looked at the light attack damage. So basically, like, the way this move was good is the regular version is kind of just, you like, used in combos or for hit confirms. So when you're doing stuff like this and you're like, oh, I'm hitting the opponent, you can dash in, do it, and it's part of your combo routes as well. That I dropped. But if you're using it in neutral you, and you want to go through attacks and you can do the held version where she gets, like, full invincibility and stuff as well, um... Which, you know, is fine. They didn't change that at all. It's still, you know, normal and punishable as it should be. But this version should also be punishable. Because she can just do this now. She can just do this whenever she wants. And she doesn't even have to hit confirm it. She doesn't have to, like, sometimes you would have to throw two of them to be like, oh yeah, now I'm hitting them, then I can dash in. She doesn't have to do that. She can just go doop, 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 doop. And yes, it costs three bars. But it's insanely strong neutral. It doesn't matter if it's a slight bit expensive. It, she's getting in for free. She's plus in your face. She, uh, what? It just makes one of the things that was like a slight tricky part about the character. Like, oh, yeah, you kind of you can't like be doing this stuff too much. Because like if you if it doesn't hit, then it's kind of expensive. Now it doesn't matter. Now it doesn't matter. You can just do it whenever you like. And as long as you're not completely out of meter, she can just do this. And if it hits, cool. I get my cool damaging combos that I'm going to drop, apparently. <laughs> but what? That is so crazy. And yeah, not only... Like, they said you can cancel into a sidestep, which would be crazy enough on its own. You know, she can just get out of there for free, keep herself safe. But she can cancel into a dash and just keep herself plus and keep it her turn. She can just do this and go for a grab while she's plus, or do anything. She's, like, intentionally character that doesn't have much opportunities to be plus or go for much pressure, because when she's plus or when the opponent's blocking things, she always does ridiculous stuff like this that's basically impossible to deal with. And she has a ridiculously amazing, um... uh, tilt special that's, like, kind of safe and leads to great combos and is just generally awesome. So now, if she's the slightest bit plus, even if she doesn't have, like, the fastest attacks, she can go straight into, I mean, she can go straight into this armored attack, and what, or she can go into this. This means so much, guys. What the heck? Let's see how much damage her normal attacks do. Okay. Luckily, it doesn't seem like it's changed too much. Oh, the down combo actually does a decent amount of damage now. That's, like... Shinobu level damage, which, you know, isn't much, but it's certainly something. So now, rending, like, regular full attack strings does actually do some damage. It used to be basically nothing and just a good way of getting a knockdown and going for more zoning. But now... No, no, that was a little bit mistimed. But, um... I don't know, what, what kind of combos do we do? No, not that. <laughs> okay, um, it's been a while, guys. But let's just do a super simple example. I had a lot more time in that combo, and it does okay damage. And I can extend it with more than just one bar. Whoops, or I cannot. I could just drop it if I feel like it. God damn it. <laughs> Anyways, seems like she's going to be an absolute menace. Goodness me. People already really don't like this character, and now she's just got probably the most powerful, most ridiculous neutral in the entire game. And just, like, what? She's got these amazing projectiles. Right, you know... I don't even know, I didn't even need to explain why this character is overpowered. Everything she does is projectiles, everything she does controls neutral, 
now her most powerful way of getting in and actually getting damage is actually just also an amazing neutral control option that is completely thoughtless and just can be done without having to hit confirm or anything like sure go ahead make her the best character in the game okay as if we weren't already questioning it now she's the best okay okay whatever you want guys balance makers here really loves them some some <laughs> goodness me Okay, so now Enmu, he got some changes to a few little nerfs, so his aerial attack can no longer be cancelled with a quick dodge, which I'm intrigued to see how much that means. Is it just the first two hits can't be cancelled into a sidestep, or is it the full attack string can't be cancelled? Because then that would be bad for some combos and hit confirms, because really often Enmu players would just jump in the air, throw three projectiles, and if it hits, he can just dash cancel and get a really powerful combo. And if you can't do that, that's actually a noticeable nerf. They also nerfed his throw, delayed when the hitbox comes out, so it's not the most long-reaching, fastest, ridiculous throw ever. We'll see how much they actually changed it, but honestly, even if they made it trash, I don't really care. I still love Enmu, and I think this is a deserved nerf. Like, they should just don't even give him a throw. He doesn't deserve one. And also, this, I think, was kind of interesting. This is what, what I actually call a balance change. A lot of the changes in this thing are, like, kind of random stuff. But they increased the combo timer for Demon Skill 1. So this is his unblockable that you don't really see people use much because it's just not really that good. It starts a red combo and is super scaled. But now if it starts a yellow combo, he might actually be able to do some decent damage. And it is a little bit slower, but... If it does give you some reward, you might see people actually going for it. So, um, let's test go in order. Okay, he can still certainly do this because he lands on the ground and dash cancels from the floor. So he can still certainly do these easy ass hit confirms. And whatever weird stuff he does after that. But I guess, yeah, okay. So after these two hits, I can't actually dash cancel them at all. So it was just, just these first two. And does that mean I can do it off of the, oops. Can I do a sidestep cancel after the third one? No, okay. So in the air, he's a lot more unsafe, which is kind of kind of rough because this is kind of his one ways of um, being in neutral. He just jumps away and does this. And if someone throws out like a water Tanjiro support or something and then dashes their way in, it was kind of annoying. Or like a Rengoku or someone who has a support that hits in the air. It was pretty difficult to deal with when I was playing Enmu a few weeks ago. Because I had to like do that and then dash can't, like dash out of the way after my projectiles went out and just make sure I go completely sideways and dodge them. But now, if I jump in the air and the opponent brings out a support, I'm pretty defenseless. Even if I do that, it moves me in the same direction. So I, I guess like my best option would be to try and like throw this and move even higher in the air and stay in the air for longer to try and dodge them. Because I just can't sidestep out of the way. Oh, okay, I can do that though. So if I do throw these and then throw that, I can dash out of the way so he does still have ways of being super safe and oppressive in the air it's just not as easy which i'm fine with and now for this throw what change what they didn't change anything okay maybe it's a fraction of a second slower but this thing still reaches this far deals a good chunk of damage and is like extremely fast they did not change this throw i do not believe that for a second okay now for, what come on take away his throw he doesn't need it okay now for this so yeah we actually get a yellow combo after this now Still scaled a decent amount, but not ridiculously. It's like, even just, you know, if I do a super cheap combo like that, I'm able to get some damage and a knockdown using this unblockable, which is handy because it can be cancelled off to stuff like this. And it is a little bit slower. So it's not crazy. But I don't know. I kind of like this change. It gives him more use for a tool that people weren't really using, but just made sure it wasn't completely overpowered. Now, if the opponent's blocking, I can... Ooh, not that one, sorry. If they're blocking, I can do something 
Actually, I can even cancel it off of this, right? Yeah. But anytime I do a special move or something that would have been unsafe, I can like set up the bombs. And oh, they were blocking. Oops, let me just go for un unblockable. And then just go for whatever ridiculous endless stuff I lab up again. Anyways, I think generally good changes for Enmu. But honestly, I think they could have been a little harsher. Stuff like this, this change to the aerial stuff to make him less safe when he's in the air is good. But come on, they could have changed this throw and made it a lot slower. They could have made it a lot slower. Yushido and Tamayo, looks like they got a lot of changes, but basically it's just more damage. Increased damage on your heavy attacks, so your tilt attacks. Increased damage on your skill 1, increased damage on your skill 2, increased damage on your skill 3. And also a little change on your skill 3, like your DP counter parry thing. Um, the counter attack window begins sooner, and a successful counter can no longer be parried. So that's kind of good. It makes it so this tool um, is actually useful and not really a gimmick, which kind of, unless you're playing in a tournament level Hinokami Chronicles, people already didn't really know how to deal with this special move. So now it's kind of good that this special move that is really useful online will also be useful in a more professional tournament kind of setting because the opponent can't just easily parry it and just default deal with it with no problem. So now it'll be you know, actually a little bit more useful. And if it begins sooner, maybe he can actually use it as a wake-up attack. I wonder if it's like frame one or something, but being any amount earlier is good. As for the increased damage, because it only applies to your, your like your special moves and stuff, I don't know, I kind of tested, but it seems like even if I have a combo that's only special moves, it doesn't look like it's that much more damage. So I don't know how much of a change that was. And at first, and at first I started with, you know, like regular BNB combos just to see how much damage they do. And, or, but because the regular attacks don't do any more damage, it's only the specials and the heavy attack. Maybe with the heavy attack, it does a lot more damage. I don't know. Doesn't really see like the damage is that noticeable, but having the parry be better should be good because that is one of the fundamental things that is actually good about this character and if it's less easy oh and it also makes a crumple state it used to knock the opponent away right now it just has a crumple yeah it it seems like it starts up a lot more or okay they can definitely still armor through it so there's definitely still answers to it apart from the opponent parrying it including a support just beating it up I wonder, oh yeah, you can do this as well. That's kind of cool. Or you can just flop, okay. Okay, oh my god. I love how consistent things are with this character, wow. Is, is this the new Makomo of consistency? Right, okay, well, at least it seems like he might be able to get a decent amount of damage off of the parry. Yeah, that's some okay damage, but unfortunately it's still nothing great, especially for a situational situation that you only get off of a parry. So, unfortunately, not too much for Yushiro and Tamayo. But hey, more damage is always good, and a more consistent parry is also good, but I just don't know if it'll be enough. Now, Nezuko in her demon form. This is actually one of the character's changes who makes me feel like the, the people who made this patch don't actually play the game much at all. Because although the changes do technically change her in good ways and fix problems, they don't actually, or although like they theoretically should change them by what it says, but they actually don't. And if the opponent, if the person who made this patch actually knew what the problem was with Nezuko, they would have not made these fail fixes. So like her skill one, her frenzied kicks, which are a plus unblock kicks, um, they're they're plus on block, but if the opponent knows how to deal with them, they'll know that you can just do a pushback on the first or second hit, and then the rest will completely whiff, and then you can punish her for it. And now it can be cancelled with a quick dodge, which it couldn't before, but as I'll show, it can only be cancelled at the very end. And by the time you get to the complete end of the animation, if the opponent is using the push, the push punish technique, then she would have already been punished, and it doesn't make a difference at all. The only thing that this changes is that now she can kind of go into 
combos more cheaply. Like she can just dash cancel it for combos. So it kind of just makes her more of a regular character. Like she just will do some buttons into her, a special move, dash cancel it, do some aerial hits, and then do some damage that way. Whereas she used to be kind of unique how she used demon skills to extend her combos. Otherwise, she just did little bits of damage. But yeah, so it doesn't change her on block really at all because she's still super punishable if the opponent pushes her back. And uh, the change to Demon Skill 1, Fiery Slash, it's easy to break the opponent's guard. Um, it already was pretty good at this, and from what I've tested, it's not a, any too much amount more. It is obviously still really good, So, and maybe this wasn't possible before, I don't really remember. But if I just do like a dash in, do some buttons into a special, or like even just one button to a special move into this, and it's plus unblock, so if I do one more dash in, you're done. And so like, yeah, even if I just did one button into, oops, not that. If I just did a button to this, so the opponent can't push that in because, you know, you dash towards them and then you do that massive thing, they can't push you back because you're already back here and then you just do one dash in and the guard breaks. That's pretty good and that's a pretty damn easy way of breaking the opponent's guard. So you're going to whittle down that guard gauge a lot more easily and as you can see here, I can extend my combos up to my standing skill, these kicks, just by dash cancelling. And of course, like, yeah, this means that you can get damage a little more so in combos, but like I saw Globe Kusho or something off like this, like, wow, look at the crazy damage she can get when she spends all her meter. But yeah, it's kind of cool that she can get damage without using Demon Gauge. It is very strong because if she has broken out of a combo, she couldn't really deal much damage. But yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about it. Because it also takes away, like, the unique stuff that she had where she has better combos in the corner. Like, if I'm in this, like, range from the corner, I could get a free dash in after my kicks. Because I'm close to the wall, but now the dash in always will cost meter. So it kind of takes away some of the cool nuance of the character and just makes her play like a regular character. Where you just do some buttons, into a special, dash cancel it, do some attacks, do some more specials. And if you want to cash out, you cash out. But, yeah. Anyways, it's, it's kind of cool. But yeah, as we saw on block, I don't really know how to show this off, but the opponent can push push you back after the first two hits and still punish you before it's over, before you even get the chance to sidestep out of the way or like dash in afterwards. So it's only useful for extending combos. And yeah, I already mentioned with this, this is a nice change because it does actually, I don't remember how well those that exact sequence would have worked before but it does break the opponent's guard gauge very quickly right now so overall technically buffs for nezuko in her demon form because she can deal a nice big chunk of damage without having to spend any demon gauge which she couldn't before but um and she can break the opponent's guard a little bit more easily but i'm just a little bit sad that it makes her a bit more of a boring character now she's just a regular character with a lot of damage which you know i guess there's nothing to complain about with that okay and now i'll quickly show Daki and yutaro just briefly because they both have the exact same change but i'll just check with both of them just to check if it's more noticeable of one character or not but basically her special meter her skill gauge begins recovering sooner after she uses her tilt skill so when she goes like this her, guild ga her skill gauge technically starts recovering sooner because if you didn't know, different moves have different amount of times before the gauge starts refilling. So as you can see after this, you know, I'm waiting a while and then it kind of gets, only starts building back by the time Sabito wakes up. But now this one kind of starts recovering. Uh, it's only a tiny bit shorter. Things like DPs usually have the longest wait. See, like I have to wait a really, really long time. Yeah, after that long knockdown and all that stuff, it only started building back after Sabito was like completely standing up. So they have a long wait, and now this is just slightly shorter. I really can't tell, I don't know how to time if this is shorter. Okay, I think it might be a fraction shorter than using her standing skill. Because what I was going to say is the only real difference that this will make to you actually playing Daki is the order of specials that you use in a combo. Because if it is a noticeable amount shorter, like regular combos, you know, you just do some attacks into like either of her special moves, into some more attacks and, you know, 
whatever kind of stuff you want to go for. But if this had a shorter recovery time, you would want to use this at the end of your combo, because then if that's the last special you built, then from there on you'll start building meter a lot sooner and you'll just have more meter. So then I would do this more in my combos. Oops, I wouldn't I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't drop my combo. But like Oops, oh my god. Oh wait, no no no. Yeah, you see my point. If it builds back faster, I guess you can go for stuff like this, but it actually doesn't seem too noticeable, so I don't think I'm gonna bother specifically aiming for that in my combo routes. And let's quickly go to Gyutaro to see if his is any more noticeable. Otherwise, I think these are pretty small changes, and it kind of further rubs in the point that it seems like they're making a balance patch and just changing things for the sake of making a balance patch, and they don't actually feel like digging into fixing problems of the game, and they're just like, oh god, I don't even know what to change about these characters. Let's just give them slightly different amounts of meter after this special move, because that'll make a lot of difference. Okay, so after I do this... Okay, it's kind of... Okay. Yeah, it seems like they come back at like literally the exact same speed. If not, this one actually seems like it's even slower. Maybe it was really slow before, and now it's just kind of normal. But yeah, that kind of ruins my cool point of like changing how you would go for your combo routes and using this one at the end of your combos because it builds back your meter faster. Because it seems like they're kind of the exact same. So never mind, I don't have a cool point to make. But you thought it was fun. I wish they made some more changes for him because I want to play with him again. And now, yeah, that's all the demons. And, uh, yeah, let me know what your opinions on the patch are. I gave my full breakdown on how I feel about this patch in the in the previous video where I talked about the Slayers, and I don't really want to repeat myself too much. But overall, the changes for the demons, I think there's only two characters that got real noticeable changes, and that is uh, Enmu got some actual, like, proper substantial nerfs that I feel like characters, like, you need to make these changes. Make it so he can't make himself so safe after his aerial attacks. They could have made his throw even slower, I, I wish they would have done that, and his demon skill 1 seems like something that I'll actually want to use now. It actually starts a proper yellow combo, and it is a little bit slower, but it's an actual useful mix-up tool now that I will probably aim for. And then the biggest winner of this patch, out of all the characters, is obviously Susamaru, who does more damage now. She like it's harder to dodge her it's harder to punish her because you can't punish after she does like the, the fly-in kick and she just will have amazing neutral more damage and more brain dead gameplay because you don't have to hit confirm things you can just throw balls throw balls all day balls all day and if it works it works if it doesn't work it works and uh I don't know how I feel about those changes, but I will certainly be trying them out and abusing them online, because that's what I do. Anyways, let me know how you feel about this patch in the comments down below, and I thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.